WXII 12 News at 10 on the Triad CW starts now. Coronavirus concerns and the number of cases both growing tonight. Right now at 10, we're learning about more people who have caught the virus here in North Carolina and Boston St. Patrick's Day Parade, the latest major event canceled over the growing threat of infection. Plus, a panel is now hearing new evidence in a high profile triad murder case that dates back almost 20 years. Well, the men's ACC tournament is coming to Greensboro for the first time since 2015. Coming up, we're talking to local businesses about what they're expecting and the boost they're expecting to see in the economy. But first tonight, we're following some breaking news out of Winston-Salem. Right now, crews are working to pinpoint exactly what caused a house fire a short time ago. This is a live look at the scene. It's on East 23rd Street, night right near Manchester Street. The call first came in around 8.30 tonight. You can see firefighters are still out there investigating. This fire impacted more than a dozen units, we're told. Four people have to find another place to stay tonight, but fortunately, no one was hurt. We're still working to get more information about this fire. We'll bring them to you just as soon as they come into our newsroom. State health officials confirmed tonight there are five new presumptive cases of coronavirus in North Carolina. All five are in Wake County, and these people traveled to Boston late last month to attend a Biogen conference. Several confirmed cases have been tied to this conference up in New England. All the patients are in isolation in their homes right now in our state. The CDC does still need to confirm these test results. Right now, our State Department of Health and Human Services is working to identify people who had close contact with these five patients. And these new cases, by the way, are not related to the first case that was announced in Wake County last week. This brings the total number of people who are sick in the state of North Carolina to seven. That last case is down in Chatham County. North Carolina Congressman and President Trump's new chief of staff is the latest politician in Washington, D.C. to self-quarantine out of fears that he may have come in contact with this virus. Yeah, Mark Meadows says his coronavirus test came back negative, but he is still isolating himself at home out of an abundance of caution. He and three other lawmakers had contact with an infected person at a CPAC conference last month in Maryland. A man from Spartanburg, South Carolina, who could have the coronavirus, flew through Charlotte Douglas Airport. The Mecklenburg County Public Health Director is advising people not to panic. The man flew to North Carolina from Italy and landed in Charlotte. The director said he did not have symptoms when he was traveling, and it's still not immediately clear which day he returned to our state. He, too, is isolated at home. This patient is one of, as we mentioned, six presumptive cases down in South Carolina. Well, we're expecting the governor and the state's coronavirus task force to hold a news conference tomorrow at noon. Yeah, giving us an update on the situation here at home. We're going to bring that to you live. We'll also stream it on WXI12.com and on our Facebook page. As this coronavirus spreads, health officials and the White House are trying to look for ways to combat it. Close to 600 people have tested positive all across the country. More than 20 have died with concern. Both of those numbers could climb mm -hmm. even higher. Jay Gray is in Washington now with a closer look. Held off the coast for days after 21 people on board tested positive for coronavirus, the Grand Princess is finally docking in Oakland. But for passengers, the ill-fated trip is far from over. Those who tested positive going straight to hospitals. More than 3,000 others who've been quarantined on the ship are being transferred to military bases in California, Texas, and Georgia, where they'll be tested and remain in isolation for at least 14 days. We are going to take care of and have been taking care of the American public. Across the country, schools are being closed, sporting events, conferences, and other gatherings canceled in areas affected. Health officials urging everyone to wash their hands regularly and limit contact. All of these things make a lot of sense, and we should be doing as much remotely as possible. At this point, more than 600 patients have tested positive for the virus in 33 states and the District of Columbia, where there's even been discussion about whether to close the capital. We want to take precautions. We want prevention, but we don't want panic. Still, President Trump continues his hands-on approach, meeting with the Coronavirus Task Force and searching for possible stimulus options as the sickness spreads, including a possible payroll tax cut, help for businesses, and protections for hourly workers worried about missing a paycheck. We're going to be working with uh, companies and small companies, large companies, a lot of companies, so that they don't uh, get penalized for something that's not their fault. It's not the White House, like so many now, looking for a cure to so much affected by the virus. Jay Gray, NBC News, Washington.
And back home, health leaders in Davidson County are working on their coronavirus contingency plan right now. Health leaders met with school leaders, law enforcement, and emergency management today to be sure everybody's on the same page. Nurses right now are taking extra precautions when doing any home testing. Schools are also putting together information for students and parents. The message we heard today, loud and clear, was one of education, cooperation, and readiness. Collaboration when you're experiencing any sort of infectious disease is critical in ensuring that we're responding and preparing appropriately. Lexington City Schools say it plans to send more information to parents a little bit later this week. Some local school districts are taking a second look at field trips out of concerns over the coronavirus. In Alamance, Burlington, and Winston-Salem, Forsyth, and in Mount Airy City Schools, leaders there tell us they are looking closely at where and when field trips are supposed to take place. A spokesperson for Alamance, Burlington says these decisions will be made on a case-by-case -case basis, even if they were previously approved. A spokesperson for Merle Fest says organizers are planning to take some extra safety measures this year. The festival brings thousands of people from all over to Wilkes County. They're going to have more places to wash your hands now, and staff says they're going to continuously wipe down surfaces. Organizers say they're hoping the virus slows down by the time the festival starts on April 23rd. And the stock market dips we've seen are making a lot of people worried about their retirement savings account. The Dow had its worst point drop ever. But when it comes to your 401k, most financial experts say you should resist the urge to react. Here are some things you should keep in mind, though. First, your age. People over 70 should not have most of their money tied up in the stock market to begin with. Also, keep short-term goals in safer investments. Money for immediate and long-term needs can gradually get more risky. And remember, volatile markets provide an opportunity to buy stocks stocks when prices are lower. Well, basketball fans spending the week in Greensboro may be worrying about catching germs, spreading the virus, but the Gate City is hosting the men's ACC tournament, and that's a big deal. It kicks off tomorrow. Check out this time-lapse video showing workers changing the hardwood out for the tournament. New tonight, our Brandon Bates joins us with how many people are expected, and our local business is about to see a big boost. Well, the last time Greensboro hosted the ACC tournament was 2015, and right now, since it's back in the triad, businesses are pretty excited about the boost that's about to hit the economy. If you ask Craver Stamey when the busiest time of the year for his business is... Just in general, without the impacts of the ACC tournament, we're, you know, I'd say the holiday season is probably the busiest time of year for us. But when the ACC tournament comes to town... Yeah, sales definitely go up quite a bit from the tournament. The family business has been here in Greensboro for decades, long before the ACC tournament even started. Here at Stamey's Barbecue, you can literally see the Coliseum from the booth. The owner says it's that close proximity and their quality food that keeps the patrons coming in and keeping the eyes on the menu. Most of our employees are long times Greensboro natives, so they resonate Greensboro with the tournament and working at Stamey's with the tournament. We look for 100,000 people over the five-day event. Across the street, Scott Johnson with the Coliseum says he's glad places like Stamey's can see the benefits of these large events. We're optimistic we'll have about $18 million in economic impact through the community. The men's ACC tournament starts this Tuesday with 14 teams and their fans providing a nice economic boost for Greensboro. And with so many people coming to this Coliseum, we did bring up the coronavirus. Coliseum officials say that they are increasing awareness with more signage and more hand sanitizing stations. They say they also clean this place every single night after every event. Reporting in Greensboro, Brandon Bates, WXII 12 News. Thanks, Brandon. And if you have some plans to go to the tournament, authorities suggest you carpool. A shuttle bus will also be available. Service to and from the Coliseum Complex starts Wednesday. The shuttle will operate from entry F of the Sheridan Greensboro at Four Seasons to the ACC Hall of Champions at the Coliseum Complex. It costs $5 per person for a round trip. High Point Police tonight are looking for a man wanted in connection with a crash that took the life of his 18-year-old son. Investigators say Roderick White Sr. was impaired Sunday morning and going more than 100 miles an hour when he lost control and ran off East Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. His car hit trees and a fence, then it caught fire. His son, Roderick White Jr., died at the scene. Two other people were thrown from that vehicle at the time. One of them has a broken back. Police say White also ran from the scene.
A Kernersville man who had a date in Forsyth County Court today now faces more charges after investigators say he smoked marijuana in the courtroom. 21 year old Keldon White filmed himself on Facebook Live, investigators say, lighting up a marijuana cigar. He was told to leave the courtroom and then charged with two counts of contempt of court for more than 45 days in jail. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office says it will not seek any additional charges beyond that.